And we thank you for joining us tonight at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. I'm Shannon Ogden. Well, the ceiling keeps rising and it doesn't look to stop anytime soon. No, tonight we are taking a 360 in-depth look at the housing market across the metro. The April report from the Colorado Association of Realtors says the median price of a home in the metro reached $660,000 last month. And that figure could hit seven figures in a year. More on that in just a moment. We're going to be in our in-depth reporting with a look at solutions. Affordable housing, it's hard to come by. A new option open today. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn joins us live. And Russell, a new complex opened on the Loretto Heights campus. Yeah, and this campus sits on the National Register of Historic Places. This is the most iconic building on campus. It dates back to the 1800s. The one that opened today dates back to 1929, and it is now being offered as affordable housing in a city with a major affordability crisis. It's a common theme in Metro Denver, making what's old new again. Two, three. Exposed bricks, high vaulted ceilings, industrial piping, and yet new modern amenities and living space. I couldn't be more excited to see the finish line we've come to. But while the redevelopment of Loretto Heights and the opening of Pancratia Hall is being applauded by some. The whole area is going to get crowded. Neighbors are still guarded about what's to come. We're concerned about, um, you know, chain stores moving in and changing the neighborhood if it were unique mom pa stores that could be fun. Lonnie Kramer lives nearby and says this redevelopment must be thoughtful. And we're also concerned about how densely populated it will be, how close the buildings will be and if there'll be enough park space and trees in between. And she's not alone. Vern Bell supports affordable housing, but also worries about his own property value. The mixed feelings. Um, I'm not sure if the people uh, really listen to everybody. A lot of people said no low income housing or not a lot of low income housing. Okay. And he's concerned about businesses surviving here. If they come in, even if they're mom and pop sh shops, I want, to, I want to see them stay. For now, city leaders like Councilman Kevin Flynn and others are celebrating the rebirth of an iconic place. This place has so much meaning for all of us. Perhaps what gives this place so much meaning is that it sits on a hill here in southwest Denver with sweeping panoramic views of the city. You see downtown and then also the Rocky Mountains. This dirt behind me will soon give way to townhomes, single family homes and commercial businesses on this 70 acre urban infill project. We're live in southwest Denver tonight. Russell Haythorn. Denver 7. All right, Russell, thank you for that. And on Monday, the city of Denver approved rezoning requests for the Barnum, Barnum West and Villa Park neighborhood to allow for accessory dwelling units, ADUs. Now, these would be smaller units homeowners can build in their backyard and then rent out. ADUs are important because they can provide another affordable housing option here. Now, so far, the Chafee Park, East Colfax and Sloan Lake neighborhoods already have ADU rezoning laws. And here's why those affordable options are so necessary. The future of a single family home is headed towards a median price of a million dollars. And the question now isn't if, but when. Denver 7's Jason Grenauer is in our newsroom breaking it down. If things stay the way they are right now, the median price for a single family home in Denver will hit a million dollars within a year from right now. It's a nice round number for a seller, um, but for a buyer, that's an affordability issue. It, it can be a concern. That's Carla Farley from the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors. Just this month, San Diego hit a million bucks for its median home price for a detached home. It is about 16% more expensive to live in San Diego, according to Salary.com, but they've also been seeing a lot of the same issues that Denver's real estate market has since COVID. Low supply, high demand, bidding wars, and more. Are we talking about this, or has this been a long time coming in, in getting to there? How did, how did you get to that million dollars? So I'm glad you did this because that 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 kind of really <laughs> explains it. It's a, this right now. The median price of a single family home here in Denver is just under six hundred eighty five thousand dollars. So still a ways to go to top a million, but on the way. Could we get two million by the end of the year or really probably by next spring? Maybe that's where my head goes. Nicole Ruth works with the Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and studies the trends in market data. She says median cost is growing a few percent a month. If the latest pace continues, we would cross that million dollar median price next April. But there is a silver lining. Our appreciation is slowing. 
thank goodness, right? We don't need this kind of extreme. More houses on the market and higher interest rates could slow the growth enough to fend off that million dollar number, possibly into later next year. We are 100% going to get there. And we're 100% going to get there because the Denver market continues to appreciate, even if we slow way down. The news isn't much better for renters. A new report from Stessa shows the median rent in Denver increased 9.3% since 2019. In the newsroom, I'm Jason Grenauer, Denver 7. And listen, we want to hear your stories. We want to hear about your experiences with this housing market. You can send your thoughts to 360 at thedenverchannel.com.